Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we make an amazing retouching with an iPhone. All right, bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the incroyable city of Paris, France. But right now, I'm in New Zealand, Queenston, doing some photography with my friend Trey Radcliffe. It's an amazing city, an amazing country. I've done a lot of urban landscape in my life, but I am breathtaken by the beauty of New Zealand and the beauty of Queenston. I've taken so many epic landscapes and I've taken a few with my iPhone. And I wanna show you how you can use Snapseed, a free app from Google to retouch this. But before, if you click here, you can subscribe to my daily newsletter. In my daily newsletter, you will get tons of free Lightroom presets, free Photoshop brushes, over 250 free tutorials, all that for free. All you have to do is get my newsletter. All right, without any further ado, let's go to Queenstown, New Zealand, and let's retouch and make an amazing iPhone photo. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. And so here I am with my iPad Pro, and I'm gonna show you Snapseed. So all I did is I clicked here on open, and I took this photo. This is a photo taken with an iPhone, just, you know, the regular JPEG right out of the camera. And I love Snapseed because it's very, very powerful. And let me show you how. You see here, you have a little pen. When you click on it, you get basically different options. The first one we're gonna use is the tune image. What the tune image is, is very similar to Lightroom. You take your finger, you go up and down, and when you do that, you have a menu. So for example, I'm gonna take brightness, okay? So I choose brightness, and then when I go from left to right, I'm gonna make the, bright, the photo brighter or darker, brighter or darker. In this case, I'm gonna make it maybe plus 30. Okay, next option is contrast, I'm gonna do that later on. Let's go for the highlights. I'm gonna, on, on, on the right, I'm gonna bring up the highlights, and on the left, I'm gonna bring them down. I'm gonna bring them down in that case. You know, I love to do that in Lightroom. Well, same thing, I love to do that in Snapseed. Okay, next we have saturation. I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation to make the colors pop even more. Next, I'm gonna take ambience. Now, ambience is like a Snapseed only feature. When you go on the right, it makes it very colorful and clarity at the same time. And on the left, it makes it less saturated and less clarity. I'm gonna add a little bit of ambience, but not so much, like plus seven is enough. Okay, now, uh, shadows. Check this out, I'm gonna open up the shadows or bring down the shadows. In this case, I'm gonna open them up like maybe plus 15, all right? And warmth, if you go on the right, it's gonna make the whole photo a lot warmer. If you go on the left, it's gonna make it a lot colder, bluer. So in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth, maybe uh, plus 24. And you see when you go up and down, you can see now brightness is at plus 30, contrast is at zero, saturation at plus 34. Ambience plus nine, highlights minus 100, shadows plus 24, warm spawn plus 24. So the only, only one I haven't done is contrast, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast here. Okay, now to see the before and after, you can put your finger on it and hold your finger. That is the before, that's the after. Before, after, of that tool only. You can also click here, before, after, before, after. Once you're happy with your basic, basic retouching, let's get into the little crazy tools. So I'm gonna press this check mark to say it's done, I'm happy, and I'm gonna press that pen again to go to my next favorite feature, which is brushes. All right, you got four different brushes. The first one is Dodge and Burn. Now Dodge and Burn is the one I use the most. By default, it's at plus 10. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna decrease it here with the decrease button at plus five. Why? Because plus 10 is a little too strong for me. And what I wanna do is, I'm gonna brush on this house a little bit here, just to bring even more details on the house itself. I'm gonna brush here, I'm gonna brush here, I'm gonna brush a little bit on the tree here to make them a little bit brighter, make that the sun is shining through. Well, you can, you can zoom with your fingers, which I did by mistake, or you can just brush. And I'm just making some little lights of, uh, a little brush of lights on the trees. Let me show you the before. Okay, I'm gonna use this before, after, before, after. You can see it mainly here on, on the house. On the house, I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter. Here also, uh, some of the highlights, I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter. And with, when you do with plus five, you have to go, uh, you have to go a lot to, uh, to make something happen, but I think it gives a more natural result. So it's like painting, you know. 
I'm only trying to make the light a little bit more interesting. So let's see the before, after. It's very subtle and you see it mostly here on, on the house. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease it to minus 10. And I'm going to brush here on top to make my sky a little darker, just the top of the sky. Now, if you do something you don't like, like for example, I think this is too strong, then you can increase it to zero and it becomes an eraser. And the eraser, you can erase what you just did. So I'm going to erase what I just did. I, th I think that minus 10 was too strong. So I'm going to decrease it to minus five and I'm going to redo it. And I'm going to avoid the trees this time. I just want to make a little vignette effect, make this, this you know, top of the sky a little darker here. Okay, something like this. Show you the before, after, before, after. Okay, now I'm going to click here for the different effects brush and I'm going to go to temperature. Now temperature basically by default is plus 10. It's going to add a, a warm effect to where you brush. So I want to add a bit of warm on this tree, on this tree, maybe here on this tree. Let me put this back and uh, voila. And uh, so now I'm going to take, I think this tree is a bit too dark. So I can just go back to the dodge and burn, go back to plus five and make this tree a little bit brighter just here. I think it's kind of weird that it's, this one is so dark. Okay, just, I'm just brushing to make it a little bit more bright here. Okay, let's see before, after, see the difference? Before, after, a little more here. Okay, and I think brush is really the thing that's gonna change your photo the most. Okay, now uh, this lake is called the haze lake. So there is a lot of haze on that lake often. I'm gonna add some more haze with brushes. So I'm gonna go back to effect, and this time I'm gonna take the EV brush. Okay, EV stands for exposure value. Plus one means it's gonna bring a lot of light. Oh, sorry, plus 0.7, but that's pretty, that's pretty decent. So I'm gonna brush here and I'm gonna, it's gonna add some haze just here on the lake and at the bottom of the house, something like this. Okay, if you think it's too much, you can decrease. I can go to eraser. I think it's a little too much here, a little too much there, you know, and you can just, I'm just trying to make some haze here a little bit. I'm gonna add some more. So increase plus seven here on the lake. A little a bit of white makes a little bit of haze, you know, just on the lake. So let's see the before, after. We start to see a lot of change because I, I added the, the haze. Okay. Uh, now you also have like a saturation brush where I can click, for example, a plus 10 and I can click on this green here and make it a bit more green, for example. If I, because I think the sky is very blue, this is already very orange. I mean, it was really like that, but I think the green was lacking a bit of saturation. So show you the before and after. It's, Brush is always the one thing that's going to make a lot of change in your photo. Okay, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to Dodge and Burn, uh, plus 10 maybe. And I just, want to, I just want to add some light here, a little bit here. And then I'm going to decrease to minus 5. And I'm going to make this a little darker to close my photo. I always like to close my photo, meaning that uh, the bottom is a bit dark, the top is a bit dark. So it forces the view inside of the photo. Okay, so I'm happy so far. I'm going to click here. And uh, now you see it says save and you, you have the number two. When you click on two, it, you can see a history here. This is the original photo. This is with the tune image that we did and this is with the brush. So quite something. All right, so let's carry on. I'm gonna click here to go out of the history and click here to continue my retouching. So details, uh, we will do that at the end. Crop, I'm gonna crop it now. So you, you've got different type of, uh, of cropping, different ratio you can choose. I'm going to click free cropping and I just want to make it a little bit more cinematic. So a bit darker here, a bit, I close it here and I close it a little bit here at the bottom and I press check. And now it's more cinematic, which I like. We might, I might dodge here a little bit more, uh, sorry, burn here to make it a bit darker again. We'll see. Okay, let's carry on. Um, Selective, I love selective also. Selective is like the gradual filter in Lightroom. The way it works is you can click here on add and I'm, I'm gonna click here, for example, on the house. So add on the house, on the house. And then with your finger, you can make it bigger or small. You see there's a circle. I want the circle to be small and I advise you to make them small, okay? And on this one, now 
this is selecting this area and now with the menu if you go up and down I can take brightness and if I go on the right I'm going to make this brighter or darker so I'm going to make this a little bit brighter I just want to add you know just like I usually do with a radio filter I make this a bit brighter I always like to have something that's bright in the middle of my photo so that people get attracted to it so I'm going to click plus again add click here if it works again okay make sure that my circle is not too big something like this and I'm going to add brightness a little bit of brightness okay something like that let me show you the before and after before after I just added a bit brightness here and a bit brightness there no big deal it's very subtle but you see subtlety after subtlety you get a very well retouched photo I'm going to do one more here I'm going to click on add here in the water let's see all right I just want to make it very small I just want a bit on the water and I might make that water a little bit brighter also you see brighter not too much brighter I don't want to I don't want to burn the pixels okay before after before after okay so the brush is really cool it's you know it's really like the red wall feature and you can do you can do brightness you can do contrast and you can do uh, saturation uh, so but in this case I only use brightness I didn't use the contrast or the saturation okay so I'm happy I'm going to click on this and let's carry on so uh, healing what the healing brush is is basically is going to clean up something let's say that this was a bird that I want to clean up I can just click here and clean that up and boom that that little uh, uh, you know cloud just went away incredible amazing okay uh, in this one I don't have much things I want to clean maybe I don't know I can zoom in maybe I can clean that up this little thing here boom take it out you get the idea but in this photo there's not much to clean up I'm kind of happy with this one so I'm going to click here but just so you know it's there let's carry on so now I'm going to go to uh, vignette now I want to show you the vignette effect it's pretty pretty neat so there you have a circle I'm going to make the circle for example over the house here once the circle is positioned you see if I if I go right left I'm going to make everything darker but the circle and if I go the other way right it's the opposite now in this case uh, I don't want to do it so if there is something you don't want to do you can just press here on the X and that tool is not going to be used and so we're back but the vignette is really cool the transform tool is really uh, great also because you can make perspective uh, correct perspectives if you've got issues which I don't have in this photo so uh, I'm gonna basically oh, actually, actually no it's not good so I'm gonna press this and um, rotate is to rotate oh details but before we go into details I want to show you the filters here uh, the filters are really cool the first one is lens blare it's the the way it works is you got a little uh, circle here let's say I put it on the house and now if I go left everything is neat if I go right it's everything is blurry but the house it, on this photo this is more for portrait it's interesting but this photo doesn't work so I'm going to press X then we have glamour glow now this one I love for landscape glamour glow gives a soft look to your photo so you got five basic presets one two three four five now I'm going to take two I like two but I think it's too strong so if I go right if I go left sorry right my glow is at hundred percent I'm just I like to add a little bit of glow uh, like maybe 24 okay let me show you the before after it's very kind of subtle but what it does it takes the HDR look out of it in a way it takes a little bit this because when you retouch too much a photo you get all kind of hellos and things like this by adding a little glamour glow you just make it a bit more natural so I'm going to click here and talking about HDR you got a great HDR uh, scape here let me show you this uh, tonal contrast I'll show you later but HDR scape uh, so you got two types of preset nature or people I'm going to take nature and you got two things fine or strong I'm going to take fine but then again instead of having plus 100 you can add just as much as you want I, you can add like just plus 10 so plus 10 is very subtle on this one let's see before after I think plus 10 did a little bit of HDR look you know but we did the glamour glow on top of it but it's kind of okay it's enough it's just a little touch of HDR okay I'm going to click this all right let's see what else we have tonal contrast now tonal contrast I don't use so much adds contrast basically gives a very HDR look I personally don't like it so I don't use it but in some photos it can be cool sorry press it again 
a gyroscope. I show you drama, same thing. Drama, you've got different type of filters and uh, you know, you can basically make it less strong or more strong. But it, it does, even at zero, it changes your photo. So in this case, I'm not going to use this one. Uh, grunge, same thing. What grunge does is basically adds texture and you can shuffle before between different texture to give a very ancient look. On this photo, I think it doesn't work. So I'm going to press X. Um, grainy film, you got a lot, a lot of different film look uh, and you can increase it with adding a lot of grain or not. I don't use it so much either. It might work on some photo. Uh, vintage, vintage is really split toning. Basically, the way split toning works is that you got a gradient here, which you can see, and it's going to try to have most of this color in your photo. It alters a lot the photo, and in this case, I'm not going to use it, but it's kind of like the Instagram look. Uh, that's what vintage is for me. Uh, same thing for Retro Lux. It's Instagram look on, a, I would say, on steroids, but you see it adds a texture in the same time and like a dirty texture like it adds dirt to your photo. I don't use that either, but it can be cool on some effects. Noir and black and white is to make black and white, and I'll show this to you on another tutorial. And frame is pretty cool. Frame, you can choose different types of framings and, um, you know, like very like sort of ancient type of frames. Same thing, I'm not gonna use it on this one. So, voila, that's basically the tools you have in Snapseal. So powerful. Uh, let me see, I think I'm gonna add some more brush effect on this one. I'm gonna take maybe the Dodge and Burn. Plus 10, I'm going to leave it at plus 10. I'm just going to make this a little bit brighter here. I want to make that way a little bit brighter. It's just there. And maybe here, this a little bit brighter. Uh, this a little bit brighter. I like to, when I do brushes, I like to do them to do brush on top of brushes, you know, and I'm painting, painting over my photo. Okay. I'm just going for an emotional impact. I don't care whether it's heavy retouch or not. All I care is do people like the photo? Is it, is it creating emotion with people or not? This might be a little bit over the top, but I wanted to show you what you can do with that software. So let me show you again where, where, where we stand, sorry. You see, we did eight things. Here is the original photo. We did some tune image for the like Lightroom overall look. Then we did some first brush. Then we cropped it. Then we did the selective, you know, uh, circles. And then we healed it by taking a few things out. We add a bit of glamour glow, a little bit of HDR, and again, a little bit of brush. And voila, this is finished though. So I hope you like this guys, and I will see you in another episode. Au revoir. Bonjour and bienvenue, welcome on my website. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email, you can then create an account, and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing, no money, it's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome and let's do some photos together.